This video is going to take you through some exam style questions on simple probability. First question we're going to look at involves cards being placed into a hat. There are four cards that are marked January, March, June and July. One of the cards is chosen at random. What's the probability of choosing the card marked June? To answer this question, what you need to do is you need to look at, first of all, how many different cards there are in the hat. How many different possibilities are there of what you could draw from the hat? You could draw this card, this card, this card, or this card, a total of four cards. So we're going to write a fraction out of four. And as soon as you're thinking out of four, we need to know the number at the top of the fraction, don't we? We need to know how many are marked with a June. And June is just here. Just the one card is marked June. Therefore, there is one card out of four marked with a June. And that is our answer. One quarter. You could turn that into a decimal, or you could turn it into a percentage. It's probably easiest with probability to start thinking with fractions. So second question says, what is the probability of choosing a card marked with a month containing the letter J? To do this question, you need to look again at how many of the cards contain the letter J. There are one, two, three of them. Three cards out of four. That would be a perfectly acceptable answer. You could, again, turn that into a decimal or a percentage if you prefer. The third question says, what is the probability of choosing a card marked with a month that does not contain the letter J? There are two sort of ways that you can do this question. You can go back to the cards and say, look, there's only one which doesn't feature the letter J. Or you could just look at your previous answer. If you've worked out the probability that something contains the letter J, as three quarters, the probability that it doesn't contain the letter J is simply going to be the other fraction which makes up a total, because these two together is, makes a complete list. When you've got a complete list of outcomes, they will total up to one. So this one here says the number of cards that contain a J is 3 out of 4. The opposite, the number of cards that don't contain a J, will be 1 out of 4. Together, they make up 4 out of 4, or a whole, or 100%. So the answer to this question is 1 out of 4. Again, I will stress, you can do this by just going back to the cards and counting how many do not contain a letter J. There are four cards in total, and this one does not contain a letter J. One out of four. The last thing we've got to do is we've got to label on this number line our answers from A, B, and C. Now, because we're talking about there being fractions out of four, we should label these numbers, these little dashes on here, with fractions out of 4. Now this one here, 0, really represents 0 out of 4. And then the next one is 1 out of 4, 2 out of 4, 3 out of 4, and 4 out of 4. Remember, something that would have 0 chance out of 4 would be described as impossible. Something that always happened every time you picked a card, four times out of four, so four ways of doing it out of the four cards in total, would be certain to happen. And something that only happens two times on two of the cards out of the four would be evens. Here we had for part A, one quarter. So we put an A there. For part B, we had three quarters. So we put a B there. And for part C, we had one quarter again. So I'm just going to put a little comma and a C to say that we're pointing to one quarter again.
Here's another exam style question. It says a fair five-sided spinner is spun and again I'm focusing on these number lines. Put arrows on the number line to show the probabilities of landing on each number. Label the arrows with the correct number. So to do this we need to do a little bit of work first of all. First of all notice there are five sections to the spinner so our probabilities are going to be out of five. Probability of getting a one is going to be something out of five and our probability of getting a two is going to be something out of five. How many ones are there on the spinner? There are two of them. And how many twos are there on the spinner? There are three of them. So the first thing I've done is just done a quick fraction for each of the probabilities. The probability of getting a one, two-fifths, probability of getting a two is three-fifths. Now I need to turn to my number line and again the same principle applies. There are five sections on the spinner so we need five sections um, if you like these are the sections of the number line. So the first thing we're going to put here is zero out of five. That means impossible. It's impossible to get a three on this spinner for example. Next up, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and something that was certain to happen, five fifths. Let's have a look where we're going to put our arrows. The first arrow for number one needs to go at two fifths there, and the second arrow for the number getting getting the number two needs to go at three-fifths. So I label it like that. There's a second part to this question though. It says use a suitable word from the list to complete each sentence. And here's a list of words. Impossible, unlikely, evens, likely and certain. Spinning a one on the spinner is... Now remember, if something is dead in the middle like this, that is evens to the left hand side is unlikely to the right hand side is likely so the probability of getting a 1 here to the left hand side this is unlikely the probability of spinning a 2 on the spinner is on the right hand side it's going towards certain it's certainly likely more likely than evens that that is going to happen. So we describe it as likely. And spinning a three on the spinner, well there were no threes on this spinner at all. You can't do it. If you think about physically spinning that spinner, it will never land on a three. So it is impossible. It's really important that you get this idea that if something is impossible we give it the number zero if something is certain we give it the number one or a hundred percent gonna happen if something is evens that's a fifty percent chance of happening and anything in this zone here is unlikely and anything in this zone here more than evens is likely